Ham, 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 what to do with that leftover ham after Easter? Well, here's what my ham. I'm going to take it out of the pan, get it on a sheet, and that's dinner. But now we have leftover liquid. Well, what are we going to do with that? Well, guess what? We're going to make ham gravy. Calls for three tablespoons of um, cornstarch. Uh, mix it up really well in about a third of a cup of cold water. And what you're going to do after that is you are going to mix all that into the liquid left over from the ham that looks a little whitish there, and that's not Abbey normal. Um, it will darken up a little bit, but it tastes really good. Okay, you're going to want to put your element on high because you want that liquid to get up to a boil. You pour your cornstarch mixture in. And you're going to have to stir it in order to make the gravy, but that's okay. It only takes a couple minutes, and once you get that liquid up to a boil, you're going to see how it gets thicker and thicker. There we go right now. It is thick, and it is done. Uh, you can make it thicker if you like, but, you know, I don't. And here we are, the finished product. Good for potatoes and ham and lots of other stuff. Ham gravy. All right, use number two is bread and gravy. This is an old family favorite of mine, uh, likely a depression meal that uh, my dad's side of the family ate a lot of, and it carried down to ours. It is good. Don't knock until you try it. Here's another family favorite. Try the gravy on pancakes. Now it might sound a little bizarre because you are used to pancakes with syrup, but once you get used to it, the two tastes combine really well. And while ham's really good, I find it number two. If you really want to try it on pancakes, beef gravy is the way to go. Try it. You'll like it. Mmm, come on. Doesn't that look good? Yummy, yummy. So the first dish with leftover ham is going to be a quiche. Now that calls for six eggs, which I'm cracking right here. I also have a store-bought crust, which is in the oven for about 15 minutes to give it a head start. So with the six eggs, and we're going to mix that fairly well, comes a cup to a cup and a half of nicely diced ham, of course, that's the whole point. Along with that, we're going to throw in some onions, some peppers, you know, pretty well to what you, what your preference is. And um, you want some spices, so that's salt, pepper, maybe some garlic. And of course, at the very end, I put in a couple tablespoons of sour cream. Um, I've tend to find it mixes up really nice, it holds together well. And of course a little bit of cheese. So we're going to dump that whole mixture into the pie shell and that's going to go in the oven for about a half an hour. We'll top it with a little bit of cheese at the end and when it comes out it should look something like this. Oh and of course the last thing you might want to try with the leftover gravy is throw a little bit on your quiche. Gives it a really different taste, I'll tell you that. Next up is potato ham uh, soup done in a crock pot. Now here I have roughly seven cups of small chopped potatoes, um, followed by a, a medium onion, a carrot, and because I've already pre-chopped all this and thrown it in the freezer, I had some celery too, so that's kind of my soup mix, but hey, it'll work in this case. Um, followed by, of course, the most important ingredient, okay. ham. So that's about two cups of ham we're going to throw in right here. So the next part of this is to put in the chicken stock. Now I had to do the measurements. I poured in one of these and unfortunately I called for five cups but the containers were in uh, metric so I'm not quite sure what it was. I had to do a quick conversion so it looks like one container and about a third actually makes five cups. So that's what we ended up doing. So when you see the no-name chicken stock, I had to work with what I had. 
and uh, that'll get us to the five cups that we need. See, there it is right there. See the difference, too? I think No Name's not quite as good as the other stuff. Now we're going to throw in about two teaspoons of parsley. That should do it, and a bunch of pepper. Pepper it to taste. No salt, because obviously the ham's salty enough. We're going to put the lid on this thing. We're going to put it on slow cook, and we're going to cook this puppy for a good seven hours. And then we'll go on to the next steps. And seven hours later, voila, there we go. We've added milk and a little bit of sour cream, giving it a stir. Now, if you want it a little thicker, um, you add a little bit of cornstarch and thicken it up like you would a gravy. And speaking of gravy, great way to get rid of that leftover gravy. Just pour it in. I poured about a cup in and mixed it around for a little extra flavor. Next up is a baked ham and cheese roll. You need a tube of uh, crescent roll or two like I used. First one didn't come out so good. Uh, you know, don't mind it. We can still work with what we've got. The second one worked out a lot better. And what you do is you take your leftover ham spread it out on top of the crescent rolls as you can see I didn't tear them apart now one thing I found out after I put all this together is that I had to cut stuff so but you'll see that in a second so we put all the ham out and then when that's done the only other ingredient that we need for the roll anyway is Swiss cheese now I'm sure you could use whatever you like yeah, it might be good with um, with uh, cheddar or whatever but Swiss is what's called for so that's what we did so to make it easier to roll I actually had to cut them into quarters which kind of worked out okay because you know each slice of cheese is one roll don't okay it's not the greatest and you cut each of those rolls into two so you end up with eight um, per container so if you want more you roll the second one like I did there and through the magic of editing, there it is. The ham and Swiss is all ready to go. Of course, I try for a second time to roll it all at once, but it don't work out. So I've got to cut it. There I did. I did the exact same thing, cut it into rolls. And now you see in a greased pan, we're going to put them all in sideways. But that's not all. No, no. Now we need to do a little mixture to put on the top. That's a half a cup of butter, a tablespoon and a half of mustard powder, tablespoon of onion powder and a half a table uh, half a tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce you mix all that together and then what you're going to do is you're just going to dribble that on your uh, um, ham and cheese rolls mm. so you can see it kind of kind of gets a brown a little thicker consistency there and uh, we're just going to drizzle that on what we've got now what it does do when you put it in the oven which you're going to do is it does make it a little uh, liquidy so it calls for putting it in the oven for 25 minutes and I'll show you what it looks like when it comes out and when it comes out it should look something like that maybe a little darker what I found was I would probably making this again use cupcake pans um, just because that way each one's going to cook properly I found that it didn't really cook in the middle as much as I'd like. The last leftover dish we're going to make is a grilled ham and cheese sandwich. And the first thing we have to do for this one is saute the onions. So there I put a bunch of onions. I'm making three sandwiches, one for me and both my kids. So we're going to want to cook that down till it looks like that. And we're going to set it aside because that's part of the goodies we need to build our sandwich. So once we've done that, off we go to the bread. Now I made some bread with our bread maker, so it's not really standardized bread. So I'm going to cut them in half to make one sandwich each. Once we've got our bread, I'll show you how to assemble one of them. On the one side, you're going to use a little bit of Dijon mustard, or any kind of mustard you really want. On the other side, we're going to use mayo, just enough to cover it, and then we're going to spread it out so it covers everything, just like you would uh, buttering up the bread to put in the frying pan. 
Next, we're going to put on some ham. You want it nice and thinly sliced. Deli meat if you can. I couldn't. And your cheese is going to go on the outside. Now, of course, I forgot to put the cheese under the ham, so I had to do it after I'd already started it. Then you put your ham. Now you're going to put those onions that we cooked up on top. And then all you do from that point, fold her up, throw a little bit of butter on the top, just on the top. And of course, once we're done spreading out the top, we're going to bring it over to the stove. You got your pan already preheated, kind of important. And we'll butter the other half once we flip them over. But off they go to cook. Now I've already assembled the three sandwiches. You're going to place them butter side down in the pan. And there we go. And you put a little weight on top. That's the best I can do. So now they're ready to flip. Ta -da. You butter the tops just like that. And once we're done buttering everything, then we're going to have to flip them over. So now that we're done buttering, now we just got to flip them over. And they should be all nice and goldy brown on the one side. And that's right where we want them to be. Oh, look at that. Nice and golden brown. Okay, I'm not the best flipper. But you get the idea. That's what they should look like. Wait for the other side to finish up cooking. And you're done. Once that's done on the other side, all that's left to do is put it on a plate and enjoy. There you have it. Grilled ham and Swiss cheese. Oh yeah, and one last thing. The ham bone, throw it in the freezer. Down the road we're going to make pea soup. So there you have it. There's four different ways to use leftover ham. And of course I threw in five ways to use your gravy. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. I hope you try a couple of the ideas because I found them really interesting to try and they were pretty tasty and I'm sure going to try them again. So thanks for watching. Hit the subscribe button. Hit the bell. Throw some comments down at the bottom if you'd like and I'll see you next time. Bye.